Okay, let's try this again now that I have audio. Hello all. Just starting my stream early to make sure, first of all, that the stream's working okay. And second of all, just to kind of ramble on. And on and on and on, but mostly make sure the stream's okay. Chat's appearing where it should appear. Computer diagnostics seem okay. Hey! Hello! Hey, Catton. Hi, ZPI. I recognize your thing. Hello, Clatch. Clatchian rub suit. Yeah, I'm just going to call you Clatch. So, hello, all. I took last week off uh, to celebrate Father's Day with my dad and my grandpa. So Pamela, from my understanding, filled in if she wasn't feeling sick. And I hope you all had a good Father's Day if you chose to do the thing. Double audio. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. Is it echoey? Hey, Peter. Ah, okay. I'm glad you sorted that out, DPI. Hooray! I'm happy to hear you got to spend some time with your uh, grandfather, Peter. We went to the park, and we grilled lamb, which was a first. I have graduate student friends from Kenya, and they grill goat all the time and we were supposed to have goat for Father's Day and Kenyans were supposed to show up and cook it neither of which happened so yeah I grilled lamb for the first time ever and that was scary but turned out all right you know my grandfather liked it my dad liked it the kids weren't a fan but that's why the kids had chicken so Have anything good to eat, Peter? So, what else is, has, not much else has been happening since the last time I talked to you guys. I have my new computer pretty much up, running, settled in, mostly the way, the way I want it. Uh, I might tear into the case and switch out fans with my old build. The fans aren't that old. The motherboard on the old case has three pin headers and the motherboard on the new case, the new build has four pin headers and the right fans aren't in the right places. So Yes, and, and the dead version is, is correct. I fixed the heating issues. I did another scary thing, and I replaced the thermal compound on both of the rigs. Mainly, on the new rig, I replaced it on my uh, graphics card, which is a hand-me-down from Big J, and that made everything run so much better and on the older rig I replaced the thermal compound on the CPU and the GPU to make it all nice and shiny for my nephew who won't get to use it for another couple weeks but that's life yep. 
but I can play video games and I can stream and I don't have to worry about things crashing and overheating, which is amazing and a nice feeling. So, I, the data we're going to be working on, or that I'm going to be working on, unfortunately, is, is and is not available to the public. If you have all the software, you can download the original FITS files and stack them and clean them and calibrate them and do all those other things and remove the, uh, the chip gap. But I didn't have to do any of that because astronomers did it for me. I work at uh, Ward Beecher Planetarium at Youngstown State University. I am funded by CosmoQuest. Hooray, CosmoQuest! Your donations pay me so I can keep doing stuff like this. Um, but they got the data for me. It's drizzled and stacked and calibrated, but it's black and white and not much to look at. And I'm a, f a little worried that even after we go through and tweak some of the things that it's still not going to be much to look at. But I won't know until we're done. The paper, let's see if I can pull that up real quick, that, yeah, Firefox really just doesn't want me to right click. The paper was published very recently. like within the last week or so by Chris Mihos at Case Western, John Feldmeyer and Pat Durrell. At Youngstown State University and come on, can I copy it that way? Nope. Wow just type it in shorthand and um, a couple other people that I am not familiar with arvix.org abs 1806.06828 that's the link to the paper uh, yeah a couple of people then <coughs> I can only I don't recognize two of the names on the paper and they're the last two that are listed. It's a pretty technical paper. It's they used um the Hubble Space Telescope to look at the very outer e edges of M101 to essentially see what's out there. And yeah. You're not even looking at the right thing. Let me pull that, pull the correct one back up. There we go. So in the paper that I have pulled up, you'll see a cyan or blue or a light colored box if you're colorblind. And then, and that one's closer to M101. Link has a typo. Hmm. All right, let me see if I can fix that. Oh, gotcha. Thank you for catching that. This is why I would much rather arxiv.org slash abs slash 1806-06828. There. That one's correct. Hooray! But in the, in figure one, actually, yeah, there's these two boxes, and one's closer to the center of the galaxy, and one's a bit further away. 
if you can see color, all the colors, uh, there's a cyan, that one's closer, and there's a red, that one's further away. And that's essentially where they pointed the Hubble telescope. I don't remember how many orbits. I know it's a significant number of orbits. I know it was a significant number of exposures that were taken and drizzled and stacked and all these other wonderful things that they do to the data. And the only difference between those two fields, aside from their location, is the instrument used. And I believe, yeah, the ACS is blue, the one closer, and the one further away is WFC3. And other than alignment, I don't know the reasoning behind why they chose what they chose. I do know what filters they used. They used the 606 filter and the 814 filter, which unfortunately, for our purposes, to make things look pretty, the 606 filter on the WFC, yeah, the WFC camera, the 606 filter captures the whole spectrum from blue to red. And the 814 filter essentially captures red and infrared. It cuts off at about 960 nanometers, which is outside of the visible spectrum. So with that in mind, and the fact that I only have two images because they only use two filters. We're gonna do the best we can with what I have. And we're just going to arbitrarily assign colors. You'll probably hear me repeat this again. Hey Guido, I'm just rambling on making sure my stream is working before I start streaming for real. And I didn't know what else to ramble on about, so I'm rambling on about the data. For those of you that aren't familiar with telescope data, yes, it does all come down in grayscale. And any Hubble images you see with color are quote unquote fake color, simply because people are trying to emphasize certain gases, structures, etc., etc. I hesitate to say just to make it look pretty, but some people do just, you know, to make it look pretty. There is <clears throat> all sorts of reasons behind this. So, hooray! Star Strider is hosting me which means I should probably start for real. Okay, we are starting for real now. Hello, welcome to Science Sunday, hosted by CosmoQuest. Hi, Larry. I am Annie Wilson, and I am going to fiddle with Hubble telescope data today. The programs I'm using are a free program called FITS Liberator from ESA, ESO, NASA. It used to be a Photoshop plugin. Photoshop is the industry standard software for colorizing these images. Unfortunately, for reasons a bit beyond my control, I don't have Photoshop at home. I have GIMP, which is a, f which is a free program that runs on multiple platforms and gets the job done. I'm not crazy about how it gets the job done, but it gets the job done. So the data we're working with is currently grayscale, like all telescope data is when it's first downloaded. This data is, um, there's four images from two different cameras and two different filters. So the plan today is, at the very least, 
get comfortable with the data. Um, maybe we'll make a finished image, maybe we won't. This data has not been seen by the public. Let me, all right, my mic's a little hot. Let me adjust that. Uh, this data has not been seen by the public. And it's not going to be much to look at. As you can see, I already have it up on my screen. It's just a bunch of a, uh, just a bunch of dots. We may not see structure. I will be quite surprised if we'll see structure. The paper on the left, or on the right, excuse me, is highlights the areas that uh, the portion of M101 where the images were taken. The blue box or the cyan box is for the ACS, which is one of the images I have up. And the red box is for WFC3. And the only reason why they're like this, there's several reasons why they aimed the telescope like this. Uh, they wanted to catch that bit of the plume up so you can see what I'm talking about. They wanted to catch the bit of the plume and compare it to the bit of the outside of the plume because if you look at the image on the left, it looks like both boxes are being uh, pointed at essentially empty space where there is no galaxy. And this uh, shows otherwise. It is a technical paper that I don't quite understand all of it. I am not a I'm not an astronomer. I know enough to be dangerous. So all the little lights, all the little spots that we're seeing right now in the Fitz Liberator, those are all stars. Each and every one individual of those are stars. And because this is the ACS field, we're looking at, let me switch windows. We're looking at stars that are in the kind of hidden bit of the northeast plume of M101. There are, yeah, in the bigger image, some of these dots are galaxies. Like I think this fuzzy smudge is um, N5477. But nowhere in this paper do they show the actual image that they took. Oh, that's just going to load. But they have all these other pretty charts and graphs that explain what's going on. It has to deal all with the stellar population. So, again, I know enough astronomy to be dangerous. All right, so the first thing we need to do with this image is essentially pull out more detail. And right now the stretch function I have set is linear. If we're going to go down here to, you wanna, I'm not sure if that's import or export. If we're going to leave this as a 16-bit image, because I'm fairly certain that's what it is and not a 32. So we're going to change the stretch function to arc sine h. And I know it doesn't look like a lot has changed. So I'm going to hit auto scaling and boom, we can see more things. Zoom in a bit. Like I'm not sure if this little figure eight or infinity sign is an artifact or something else. But we can see a whole lot more. Wow, that actually kind of looks like a galaxy way over there. That may actually be a galaxy in the background. This little smudge right here might be a galaxy in the background. Uh, but this bright point right here that has 
kind of the cross thing going on, that's a star. So zoom back out. And then we are going to turn on light clipping. This is literally showing the pixels that are the max and the computer is just essentially, these are the brightest things. And there's not a whole lot, which is good. And we're also going to turn on black clipping and that'll show us, you know, the very, very black or beyond the blackest. You might see a band right here of blue bits. It's very, very difficult to see. Let me zoom in. You might see a band of blue bits here. That's from the chip gap. So we're going to adjust our black level. And there's always the reset button. Auto scaling. So we're just gonna kind of fiddle with things until we get the level of detail we want. That, that's, that's too much. Everything's overblown. Fenmill? I just stop talking sometimes. And because there's no music to assure you that the audio is still on, and my dogs are remarkably quiet when I stream, it may just sound like the audio has dropped out. So let me hit reset again to see where everything was before. Arc sign, auto scaling, has the stars pretty bright, has the center of what appears to be a galaxy is pretty bright. And I think we've brought out a bunch of different and I'll set it to right there, which is what I would do if this were a photo. I think we've brought out more detail. So now Oh, there's other tools. Also, by the way, this is the first time I've used this tool. like ever. I've been meaning to get it and I just haven't gotten it. All right, pull that up a bit up. Oh, it's probably too much. Zoom back out. I do have a fish tank, but it is not close enough to my computer for the audio to be picked up. And I just added more water so it wouldn't be annoying and bubbly. All right, we're gonna do fit and preview. I don't wanna cut out so much black that it affects things. So I think we're just gonna leave it about there. Yeah, Peter, I have, I have a cat and the cat has zero interest in, I don't know what save and edit is. We'll just do save file. Drizzle, edit, save this. I have a cat, but he shows zero, zero interest in the fish tank. He doesn't even sit next to it. To be fair, my fish tank houses exactly one fish and uh, he's not seen very often. He just hides. 
I kind of feel bad for this poor fish because I do nothing to actively keep him alive. And he just keeps on going. He's, you know, pretty rolls with it. But he, he does all right. I thought about putting like a beta in there with him because I don't think he and the, I don't think he and the beta would, would fight. And it's like a big 20 gallon fish tank. Anyway, so I went ahead and opened the second image for the ACS. And that is the blue box that's closest to the M101 in the picture. I don't know which filter this is. And I forgot to ask quite frankly. So again, we're going to go to arc sign H and then hit auto scale. And just so you can see why I have chosen arc sign H, we're going to play around with some of these other ones. Like that is super gray and not useful for anyone. And then this one is super dark and not useful for anything. And it doesn't particularly get better. Like this one's kind of neat, but again, super gray. That one's still log log is still a bit gray. And you know, the graph changes. Like this to me adds a lot of stuff. Actually, that's probably okay, but that's not what we're going to roll with this time. Hello. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Egg. I'm going to call you Egg. $300 pet deposit for a fish tank. That's kind of insane, but on the other hand, water damage. It's literally the only thing I can think of that would justify that. All right. So we've done that. Come on, really? Drop that here. We're gonna save this one. We might go back and chat it, edit the other one. So this is going to be edit arc sign H. So I can tell the edits apart. And for fun, we're going to go to the log log auto scaling. Um, I hit auto scaling. I'm going to save this one real quick. Call it, I know you can't see my uh, save screen, but call this one log log. Save. Auto scale, no, not that one. That might actually be nice. It's hard to see, but just kind of zoom in. So I went to arc sign H of arc sign H, hit auto scaling, and it pulled up a bunch of things. Bumped up to black. What's that? That? I don't know. I don't remember. But that pulled up a lot, and I don't think it was too much. So, worst case scenario. I don't use it. Arc sign, arc sign. All 
All right, I'm going to open the other one back up. And this one was... Oh my, did it not do what I wanted it to do? Again, this is the first time I have messed around with any of this. All right, so that's arc sign, arc sign. We did log log, auto scaling. Leave that as it is. Save. No, it's doing what it should. Edit, log, log. Again, all I'm doing is applying different stretch functions so different bits of the file can be seen. I know it's very difficult to see any of this right now. And when we open up and open it up in GIMP, which should be very soon, hopefully we'll see more uh, detail. Actually, while I'm doing this, We'll start a poll because I know this is not probably one of the most exciting things to look at. What? I thought it would take care of all of that in the thing, but I guess we'll find out. All right, so we did arc sign, arc sign, and did we? We did. One, arc sign, arc sign, log, log. All right, cool, so I think that's all give you all a moment more to vote while I go ahead and pull up the Uh, DPI, this is the very first time I've used the poll. So, I guess we're going to figure this out. That's mildly terrifying for me. Oh, straw poll increase or er, straw poll assign the colors. Wow, wow. That's going to be very confusing. So here we go. It gave me a bunch of error messages and I'm not sure why. So we're going to kind of ignore all of that. Well, once upon a time my my thing looked pretty. Might help if I was using transition, might help if I was using the correct thing. Give 
Give me one second. I know it looks terrible. Alright, you want know what? <sighs> Why are you doing this to me today? I am so, so sorry. For the record, this was much easier on the old machine. Everything looks wonky. Please give me a moment. Welcome to all of you who have just recently joined. Resize that a bit. All right, cool. I think I'm ready to fix the screen. Hello, Cosmic Lettuce. All right, so now I should be able to tell the thing, pull results. All right, so the first layer, whichever one we choose, is going to be red. I need to not mess with the window. Okay, so we've pulled up our images in GIMP. I've opened them as layers. Right now, they are all set with a blend mode of normal, which is not what we want. We actually want screen. So I'm going to go through all of these. Oops, that should be 100%. All of these and switch them to screen. Hello! And while I do this, because I'm going to attempt to multitask, I'm going to say hello to the people that have been quiet. Hello, lurkers, all of you. Bad Panda Bear, Commander Root, Del Leet. I know that's not what it actually says, but Del Leet. Electrical Skateboard. Let's see, Fenmill, I know you've chatted. Lenice. Michael T. Mayer, hello. R.P. Schwartz, Tom Van Scotter, V and K, Vertigo, Virgo, and Zeno. Hello, all. Hello. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for your patience as I try to figure this out. Oh, no. I think I have a problem. And I'm going to have to talk to the astronomers about it. So the problem that I think I have is that when I switch to the screen blending mode that lets everything uh, pull through and um, excuse me it allows everything to pull through and literally blends it. But the problem is, is that we have two sets of drizzled and aligned images that I'm trying to put on top of each other. And right here, you can see some doubling. There's a couple different spots where there's some doubling. So that kind of messes with what I wanted to do. So we're gonna turn those off and before we get started with anything, um, we're going to make copies. Larry asked, does frequency differentiate the layers? I'm not entirely too sure what you're asking. Uh, right now, I have a 
bunch of layers for essentially two images. <coughs> the layers, the active, excuse me, the layers that I'm actively working with right now are uh, all from whichever filter. I don't know which image is which filter. I do know the filters that they used. They used a uh, 606 filter and the 814 filter. The 606 filter is uh, what they call a wideband filter. As far as narrowing down very specific wavelengths of light, it doesn't do a good job. It lets in pretty much almost all visible light. And then the 814 filter is a little more selective and lets in red and infrared. And of course, we can't see the infrared, infrared unassisted. But the light is still, the wavelengths are still picked up by the CCD and still recorded. Um, so we're dealing with the different, uh, output files. I think they picked up different things and we're just going to stack them. I can see how this one is, has a lot more gray to it than that one. That one's a lot more dark. So I think we're just going to work with these three layers. And because I, they're all from the same filter, whichever filter it is, we're just going to pick colors and see how things line up. I hope next week to have a better understanding of this data and to make it, find a way to make it more pretty instead of just a bunch of white dots. A bunch of white dots isn't exactly exciting. Things with color is. So I believe I have to go and switch something to color. Yep, mode RGB instead of grayscale. And let's see, for the first one, red was picked. And let me get the second poll running while I mess with the first layer. And right before I start, check the poll results again. And all right, red is going to be the first layer. So remove red as an option. Red is our first layer. Yes, indeed, Cosmic Lettuce, there is plenty of good science in this, and there is an entire paper about all the science, but they don't use the images that they took specifically in the paper. They used lots of charts and things from AstroPy, which I don't quite understand. What? Oh, I forgot a thing. There we go. Hooray! So we're going to do this by process of elimination. All right, so for our purposes, the first layer is going to be the top layer. I've already switched things to screen up here, and I've already switched it to RGB. Screen, already done in RGB, so we're going to... It's been a minute and I don't have my tutorial to, you know, guide me through this. So colors, colorize? Yeah, I think. All right. And you can't see the colorize window because that's how GIMP is and I apologize. 
Thank you, Cosmic Lettuce. So hue, we set for red. So we'll just set that to 360. I really should have my cheat images handy. Nope. And we'll set the lightness to zero. We'll probably oversaturate everything. So this one looks pretty red because we said, oh, I could make presets. I didn't even realize that. That's pretty neat. Um, so this one is pretty red, just like we wanted it. I'm going to hit OK. And as you can see, when I take the other ones off, all of these bright points of light now have a red tinge to them. And if I turn everything back on, it all kind of turns pink. So let's look at results for the second poll. Cosmic Lettuce. Uh, I do know that when I have seen the astronomers uh, specifically Dr. Feldmeyer working on science in his office for stars and such. It is indeed black marks on a white background. And when you first see it as essentially a layman, you're like, what is this? And oh, I'm going to cancel this real quick. Turn off the red layer. When you first see it, you're like, what is this? I don't understand what this is. But once it's explained, you're like, okay, cool. I got this. All right, so there's some green. And turn on those two. So now it looks kind of brown. Mm, this is not at all doing what I wanted it to do. But that's okay. This is why we're doing this. Turn on the last one, and I have a DPI, and I think that's actually the mode I'm in right now, because otherwise my layer bit would be a whole separate window but it doesn't pull everything else up into it. I'm just annoyed by GIMP in general. Oh no. I think I didn't do the other layer right, but that's why we made a copy. Okay. I don't think we did that layer right. So what we're going to do is pull up the original, make another layer, because adjustment layers are not a thing in GIMP. And that's why I'm annoyed by it, because adjustment layers are not a thing. If adjustment layers were a thing in GIMP, like they are in Photoshop, my life would be so much easier. But they are not. All right, so I'm turning saturation way up, because I don't think I did that. And shift this along until green. I guess that's going to be it. So pull up the blue. And I think this one's the red. All right. So the 
the arc arc sign, for whatever reason, dominates with the blue. Cosmic Lettuce. Adjustment layers literally allow you to adjust things like levels and color balance and anything that you could think of that you would change in an image on a separate layer so you're not changing the layer that it's being applied to. GIMP does not have this feature. They're supposed to eventually one day have this feature but they don't have this feature yet, which is very unfortunate and very frustrating. Okay, so applying all of these different colors really didn't tell us anything we didn't already know. Now we just have, other than the arc sign arc sign is not a good uh, filter. I guess this is not a good function to use because of all the blue that popped up. So arc sign arc sign is out. It looked neat. It just no. Unless it's copy or unless it's layered with well nothing because everything else just turns it into a different color. I think I did blue green instead of yellow, but that's okay. So now we're left with this and this one. Oh, I know why we did green, because the poll said green. So the red's okay. Yeah, you can see the red throughout. It's not bad. So arc sign is probably an okay uh, method to use. The green, did I really do to arc sign? I did. I am so sorry. All right, here, log log. Turn off these other ones. So the red, yeah, you can still see the red. The green, you can still see a bit of the green through. But I do want to say that the arc sign arc sign is definitely not the way to go because of just how blue the background looks. I'm not a fan. This isn't so bad. And you put the right filter up there. Up, oh, and I was right the first time. And this one isn't terrible either. You can see some like truly black spots back here. So, oh my gosh, why is there just not an easy zoom function? Oh, here it is. So we'll bump this up to like 50%, maybe more. You can see that there's still some, uh, some black here. Meanwhile, compared to the blue, which almost everything is blue, and it makes me sad. It might also just be a contrast thing. So that's those images. So I'm going to blank all of these out. Zoom back out so everything fits. I'm going to turn on the other layers. Probably zoom in just a bit more. There we go. And this is with the other filter. So we're going to do the same thing top down. I'm going to duplicate each layer. Duplicate the layer. Turn off the duplicates. The originals rather. And let's, you know, Start with red, so colors, colorize, saturation all the way up, hue, find a decent red. We're not going to find a decent red apparently. Oh, 
Oh, this is the log log, which we decided we didn't like with the other one. No, we like the log log with the other one. This is a different filter entirely. Okay. Oh, there we go. That's why it didn't look right. Okay. I'm going to take a moment. Rest my brain. Shh. Hi, Tinker. Did you want to be on the stream? You just feel, felt like you had to interject your comments? Okay. All right. So I'm going to take a moment and scroll up and read chat for a bit and let my brain rest because I feel like I've just been rambling about settings. See what all I missed. Oh, 2001. I don't think I've ever watched. It was seen in Stargate in 2001 talking about 2001 Odyssey or literally whatever show that had the Stargate in it? Hmm. Interesting. Congratulations to your cousin, Peter. I'm still confused as to why they wouldn't let somebody, anybody sit in the first 10 rows. Probably copyright issues. Secret recordings. Ha 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 ha. Two thousand one was long before the TV series and unrelated. Larry, considering that at least some of you saw it when you were like ten or eleven. I don't even think I was thought of yet, so I am literally too young. Hooray! Hooray! SG one. Okay. I've heard of it. I don't think I've ever watched the entire TV series. So, I have both of the log log uh, versions of the image popped up. And as you can see, there's definitely some issues with doubling. And mostly out of curiosity. I wonder if we can physically move one of the layers. Oh, we can! Look at that! We're learning and things. Hooray! Cosmic Lettuce Log Log was the stretch function I used on the image in Fitz Liberator. Okay, so we got some of the stars to line up. Looks like I might need to rotate this a tiny bit too. Okay. How do I rotate? Ooh, thank you, Peter. I will totally check out that link later. Scale layer, auto crop. Stack, mask, transparency, transform! That's what I'm looking for. Offset. Arbitrary rotation. And of course it doesn't. I can't see what I'm... I can't see the image as I'm rotating it, which is very unfortunate. I'm sure it's only like a degree or two that needs to be rotated. Hmm. Is 
slice the image into sub images using guides. No, I don't think I want to guillotine it. I literally just want to, you know, rotate it. But I don't think I can do that. Oh, because I was doing layer transform instead of image. Scale image, auto crop, zealous crop, merge, flatten. And it's not giving me a option to just rotate a tiny bit. Okay, so. I think the image that we're going to rotate or try to rotate, we're just gonna pick one and see what happens. Right, layer, transform, arbitrary rotation, literally do one angle, rotate, or one degree, I'm sorry. Okay, that looks a little better. There's not as much doubling, but... I think I overshot it, maybe? I definitely overshot it. So one degree is too much. Who would have thought? All right, let's try this again. Layer, transform, arbitrary rotation. Oh look, we can do part of degrees. Rotate. That looks better. I, yeah, there are a decent number of like background galaxies in this image. I know that um, when they were doing other research for something else that uh, doctors Feldmeyer and Durrell accidentally found a galaxy and the local press made a huge deal out of it. And they're like, this happens all the time. It's not that big of a deal. And it's just this little irregular goofy looking galaxy. So I think that half Mm. That half degree turn looks good. So what we're gonna do is turn our other layer off and we're going to align all of these other ones. Because this way we don't have to do it again. And next week, I will have these all lined up and ready to go. And maybe I'm going to do it with this one too, simply because I think we'll be able to see better. Arbitrary rotation. Shh. It's okay, Tinker. It's just the neighbor honking their horn. So half degree rotation seemed to do the trick. I know I had physically moved the other ones. So where's my arc sign, arc sign? Yeah. But unfortunately, I don't remember how much I moved the other one. Just that I moved it. Make sure I have the right one selected. Moving with the arrow keys does nothing. So image, configure grid, transform, flip, guillotine, layer, scale, auto crap, offset. I think this is the offset is what we want. Yes, Guido, you totally heard doggy opinions. She has strong opinions on uh, on lots of things.
Uh, two pixels wasn't quite enough. Oops. Oh no! Cancel. She has strong opinions on lots of things. Mostly the neighbors honking their horns. Because that is something that drives her and me crazy. So two wasn't enough. Four doesn't look right. Make sure I get the right tool this time. Ah, uh, because it was in more than one direction that I had to move everything. Move 17 and then negative 8. Shh. I know, I know, I know, I know. Shh. It's okay! Go outside! Come here! Tinkerbell! I know! I don't like Gimp either, Tinkerbell. I have strong opinions on this. Do we want to chat about it? Yeah? You want to chat about it? Then you have to come here so we can chat about it. No. Over here. Come here. Yes, I'd rather use Photoshop too. Come here. Come on. Urgh. Here. We don't have much time left on the stream, so just come here and sit in my lap. I'm sitting in my lap. Keep your paws off the keyboard, and we'll do fine. Yeah? Yeah, I know. You're a bit long for the for my lap. So Tinker is a dash hound. She is a cross. Yeah, that was a big yawn, huh? She is a cross between a standard and a mini. So she's a very, very long dash hound. Very, very long dash hound. I would be impressed if Tinker could type in English too. That would be highly amusing. All right, I think I'm gonna stop futzing with this. I do wish that Gimp kept track of how far I moved everything. Oh, I might be moving the wrong one, too. Oops. I think I am. Well. I was indeed moving the wrong one. Oh, no. All right. This tool selected. Click on the image. It's hard to see, but... The filters did pick up slightly different features of like the stars and the galaxies and whatever. As I attempt to check my alignment. Because the one image, oops, sorry about that. This one image is way darker than the other. But for the most part, that alignment looks okay. Yeah, I know. I know. But it would indeed be nice if I could see exactly how much I moved things. But <sighs> I guess that'll just have to be another time. So we have about five minutes left. And since I know there's a delay, I'm going to stop here because this did not turn at all out what I had hoped. I had hoped to show you guys a pretty image, 
But on the other hand, worst case scenario I knew would be you know, me getting comfortable and familiar with the data and what I'm looking at and the, thanks, Joe. It's not going to make my computer crash. I know that's what you want to do. You can try to crash my computer later, buddy. Um, but I had figured worst case scenario was get used to this data set, get used to working with Fitz images, see how everything runs on Windows. Larry says, I got redshifted. I find that hilarious. Oh, it got redshifted, not I. That, it's still kind of hilarious. Um, I'm going to talk to the astronomers this week and get input on which image is which filter and see about if I can try to isolate different features in, uh, independently from you know the main image so we can get some more color spectrum in there. And it might just be that this isn't going to be an exciting image to look at. You know, maybe we'll end up with a black background and, you know, it'll look like a starry, you know, nighttime starry sky. I have no idea. So I'm kind of excited to see what it's going to look like in the end. All right, I'm going to s scroll up and read chat. So, doggy opinions are loud and encouraged. Well, there's two of them, and they get very loud. And I'm so used to gaming and people going, ah, and muting me because my dogs are barking. So, I, I try to hit the, the mute button on my headset pretty quick. Um, Joe says that it broke for a second when I donated. Well, it didn't freeze down my computer. So, you know. That's all that matters. It didn't break my computer. Yeah, it's okay, Tinker. It's okay. Um, Guido says, Annie, you need a webcam and a doggy cam as well. I have the technology to set up a doggy cam. And I might do it. I need to make where they... Uh chill out more pretty to look at Let's see if I can pull up this just so people can see the data that we're working with um, but as far as a webcam for myself I don't have an appropriate background or lighting. I have a green screen. I don't have the proper lighting to make the green screen work well at all. So this is yet another plug for donating because if you donate, Clatch, that might be relevant and I will totally check out that link Clatch linked to a post on Superuser, and it looks like the title is Move a Layer to a Specific XY Position in GIMP. Larry, weird and proud, says, I need a spare microphone by the fish tank to add to quiet big bubbles. Yeah. If I get ambitious enough, I might just rearrange everything, but I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think I have... I don't know what you mean by a mixer because part of me is like, are you talking to Blender? I don't want to hit it, hit the button on a Blender while I'm thinking. Uh, an audio mixer, I, probably I can wrangle up a software one. But yeah, as far as a webcam for myself, I'm dealing with background clutter and lighting. And... Honestly, I like where my computer is positioned. I use my computer for both work and play. And, you know, the background clutter and lighting could be alleviated by moving the computer to another room. But 
the alternative is setting up the potato to stream on, but it's a potato and potatoes aren't good for streaming. So we'll see about all of that. But I'm going to call it here. You all have been amazing. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your time. We'll see what we come up with for next week. And yeah, any of the bits and any of the money you donate, definitely go towards paying for things like webcams and salary and travel expenses. All of these things are important and wonderful. And working for CosmoQuest is fun, and I'd like to continue doing so, but we need your support to continue for that to happen. So, anyways, see you all next week, and thanks for your time.